Welcome to part 5 of this build series. In this one I have to choose the tool head to use on this printer and also make the decision about the hot end. Should I go for the E3D V6 old one or the Bamboo Lab? I also want to get creative with my printer and do some other stuff. And by the end of this video I hope to see some movement as well. When it comes to weight there's a big difference between the Stealth Burner and the Dragon Burner. And the Dragon Burner uses a Sherpa Mini as the extruder. And that should be lighter than the Clockwork 2 extruder as well. I have some experience with the Sherpa family of extruders with this Sherpa Micro I used on the old printer. During that build I had some problems with the hot end and the PTFE tubing. So this is the result, a solid clog. After replacing the clone heatsink with the real thing from E3D and getting in a new PTFE tube, everything was fine. The completed Benchy looks good. The first layer is fine. There's some filament on the side, but that is the prime line that came loose from the print bed. Cooling seems to be fine and all in all I think this is a decent print. So the Sherpa extruder definitely works well. I made some covers for the printer and this looks a little bit boring even though it does its job. It sort of covers up things. As you might recall I'm inspired by Junkyard Wars and Scrap Heap Challenge. They always spent a few minutes on dodgy paint jobs or some other strange decorations and I'm going to do the same. I know next to nothing about resin so this is the perfect project to try that out. I'm mixing this by weight and there's supposed to be 100 of the component A and 60 of the component B as the base ratio. To complicate things further this resin expired November last year but I'm going to try it out anyway. I just emptied both of these bottles. Please remember this is not a tutorial, I probably did everything wrong, but I had some help from my wife, she's been working with resin and knows a thing or two about it. But she let me do this and just commented on the sideline. I then added some green mica powder into this resin mix. It's difficult to know how much to add to get the color you want, so it's kind of by chance the result you get. Or at least if you have no experience like me, it's totally random. The next step is to pour this down in the bottom covers. I made a couple of millimeters basin or whatever you should call it. So I'll just start filling up from the center and it should then in theory just level out and become a complete layer of resin covering all of this basin. I can promise you this is a lot more fun than removing clogs from hot ends. Eventually I got enough of the resin for each part and I spent all the resin I had in these two bottles. Just like in 3D printing you should always start by leveling your bed and I obviously didn't. You can see the resin moved to one edge of all the covers first. I used a metallic pigment and this is the one shimmer in lime green. The resin then needs to harden and I left it alone for about 24 hours before touching anything. With the two front bottom covers in place I can still get to the electronics in the back of the printer. This is what it looks like with all four covers in place and I think this looks quite good. Now back to the technical stuff. I was pretty convinced that I wanted to go for this Bamboo Lab hot end and not the old E3DV6. And I found this adapter on printables, link in the description. I liked most of it. Only thing I didn't like is the wire channel. You have to wire it like a Revo and there should be something that supports the center channel on the Bamboo Lab hot end. I might remix that myself later, we'll see. And I decided to build a stealth burner and not a dragon burner because I haven't got all the parts I need. Still waiting for fans and some other stuff. 
I had some spare Bamboo Lab hot ends. I just was missing the heater cartridge and the thermistor. And you could buy those in a pack of three for a reasonable amount of money. I think I paid about 50 euros for three pieces, including freight. Fitting the ceramic heater and a thermistor doesn't take long. The most difficult part here is the wiring. With the standard system of using a channel in the hot end it works fine, but with the stealth burner you have to wire differently and I don't like that solution. All that remains is to clean off the heat paste and then this one should be ready for use. I'm starting on the Clockwork 2 extruder installation and this requires a lot of heat set inserts. One thing I learned from looking at the CAD model was that the holes for a heat set insert should be dimension of 4.7 millimeters. That is in contrast to what is mentioned on the CNC kitchen parts, they state 4.25 millimeters. But 4.7 millimeters is a lot more practical. That allows you to position the heat set inserts and then heat them. I also have to lube these Bontech parts and I'm using super lube, which is the only thing I've got. I say Bontech parts, but these are actually clones, unfortunately. One really obvious problem with using clones is that they are not always clones like this one. You can see a big difference between the piece that is grind off this shaft. One fits, the other doesn't on the clockwork too. After wasting some time on trying to get the incorrect clone to work, I finally got this working and got the path correct as well. I'm skipping a lot of steps in this video and uh, I have a link in the description to the Maple Leaf Makers video about making a clockwork too, and that's complete. And detailed. I have no idea what brand this NEMA 14 is but I do hope it will work on my printer. And this is the completed Clockwork 2. It was not too difficult to build, would be easier with the original Bontech parts though. I did also have a closer look at the Dragon Burner and actually started building one. This is a very light design and I like it. It's got small fans for the part cooling but it's still supposed to work fine. The adapter for the Bamboo Lab Hotan is a lot lighter and smaller than the one for the Stealth Burner. And this just slides in. I even got so far as to print the diffuser for the LED. But then I run out of parts and I have to save this for another printer. I'm sure it's going to be great. One item I did get in time was this LED kit for the Stealth Burner so I could install that. And the Big 3 Tech kit was great. It had everything, including the diffuser. I just had to print the lead carrier for this. I had a question in the comments about if I'm going to build more 3D printers. Maybe, but my main interest is fixing things with 3D printing, not building the printers. In this scrap heap build, I want to try out something I wanted to do a long time ago, and I tried that on this old awful printer using a D sub 9 for the tool head. I never completed that printer, but this one will be finished, I promise you. I'm building this printer as I do all these videos, and I do mistakes. Like for instance, I wanted to have two Picos, but then where would I connect the display? There's no display output on the Pico as far as I know, so I had to go for the SKR 1.3. I wanted to keep the solution with the Caddy, so I just made a larger Caddy for the SKR 1.3. I decided to keep the idea with using a separate MOSFET to keep that heat off the SKR 1.3. This is what it looks like in the printer and I will make a cover to protect those mains connectors. To provide the Pico with power I wanted to use this keystone part and make room for an XT60 connector inside this one. It took a couple of tries to get this right but finally I got something that fit perfectly. And this isn't best practice, this should have been a female connector. But what is best practice in this project? Nothing I guess. I'm continuing with the wiring and get the wires ready for the caddy so that it can move outside. This is the cover that protects the main terminals. I'm finally ready to get configuring clipper, looking at the printer CFG and working in main sail. As you can see, I can control the heated bed. I have a temperature 
and everything seems to be fine. And we can see both MCUs, the MCU and the MCU Z. I'll now try out the stepper bus function to check the Z motors and I get this spectacular error message. After some serious troubleshooting I found these stepper motors to be the problem. They are wired differently than almost every other stepper motor I have seen. The letters in red show how this stepper motor is wired. The letters in orange is typical pinout for a stepper motor. To fix this I had to make some changes to these connectors as I couldn't change the stepper motor or the controller board. With that sorted out I could use the stepper bus function. The stepper motor moved but it was in the wrong direction. That is very easy to fix so no problem with that. This pin is inverted and we can just remove this and it will do the opposite direction. After doing that I repeated all the tests for the front left, for the rear and for the front right. Everything was okay. In part 6 I'll be wiring the tool head and doing some other small stuff. Hope to see you back then. Bye for now.